brother. I, I, You're awesome, man. Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting here for one and only Tom O'Brien. Tom's off today, and I'm looking at the Dow up 371 at the high of the day. Now, these candles that have this very strong, powerful move that we don't know where the close is. Still got uh, 30, uh, 33 minutes to go. Oh, sorry, uh, 53 minutes to go. I'm looking at this and saying there are certain aspects to this Dow chart that are really good at this particular time. But if you step back and be a little objective about it, you'll see the things that I look at, um, and that is the MACD. The MACD still got a tremendous amount of work to cross positive. You can see that the stochastics only now, it hasn't even gone to 20%, it's only now gone to the teens, to the 16%. The unbalanced form, the little blue line here, is running very nicely, but it's uh, that's not the only thing. And the nine period moving average has got at, at 33,118, 30, has got a long way to go to see that pink line cross the 33,237 level in the Dow for the nine period to cross over the 14. It can happen, but it's going to require a lot. But what is impressive is that this pattern here that I look at, I always look at these patterns, see if I draw, if you can see my pointer right here. Strong line down, and then it makes this H pattern, arch formation that looks like a lowercase h. Well, it held the left side low, and that's really important. Why? Because it now has a chance, without taking out that left side low on a closing basis, it has a chance to rally at least into the 34,000s. Wow, that's a big ask, but that's that's what you need to see. We're looking at the S&P. Oh, I should mention just uh, for full disclosure. Uh, we've been long the Dow since the, uh, the low of October. We still long the Dow, some part of the Dow, uh, from the low that was made in 2020 in March. Uh, so we've got these positions, and we were fortunate enough to get an, a, a, a kind of an aggressive trading position in the Dow before the open on Wednesday. But we ha are raising the stops. I have to treat this with distrust. Even though the technical picture is based on the whole technique that I was talking about on Wednesday, based on the Chapman Wave Roman candle, I'm talking about this little candle, I don't want to get into it now, but Wednesday, Wednesday show discussed it as well as Thursday. Um, it gave a whole panoply of ideas that you look for, just sequences that you look for after that particular candle, and everything has been met so far. So this is really good action, but wait a minute. This is very interesting because finally we've got some catch up. You remember that for a long time the Dow was leading, then the Dow failed when it made that double top at those peak Ds in the Chapman wave uh, right there in the 34,300s. Came tumbling down, and I forgot to type this in. I believe it was 32,508. 32,500 was the low on uh, the first. Um, so, within that context, have a look at this SP. The SP right now is above the 200 period moving average, that's the orange line. The pink uh, is still underneath, the nine period moving average is still underneath the 14, but it is moving up sharply. The histogram of the MACD has a long way to go to see. It'll take to about 40, I would say 4092 to 4108 for the for the for all these different aspects to go positive. That's a long way to go. The stochastic still down at the 17% level. It should be a lot higher than on balance volumes running. So on a shorter term basis, what we're looking at is that is there was there was absolute denial. I mean, there were just so many negative stories uh, at the beginning of the week. And all of a sudden, the, the sun shines. It's just amazing how the market does that. Um, I don't mind because what we do is technical analysis and you don't care about the sunshine. Sunshine is the sunshine, but the market is the market. So you can see there's a pattern that I call the falling axe where you've got declining trend lines. The upper one starts to pull back, creates a trend line that's two joined um, highs. And then you go to the lows and you can see where it's expanding with lower lows. Lower highs are much lower lows. And all of a sudden it kind of forms a base and it tries to rally. That's really important. Now, I haven't gone to the weekly charts, but look at the weekly chart of the S&P. Holding this trend line, this inside track, was what, what was a repellent zone, has become a propellant zone. There's a lot of things that actually are working quite nicely. Look at the QQQ. The QQQ, uh, let me just extend these lines. I call this the chis, that falling axe formation, that uh, declining 
expanding cone. Uh, I don't want to make it sound too complicated. In my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, we go through all these things. And for subscribers to my opening call, they know that I'm always looking at these particular patterns. And you can see now, we're just about to try an attempt at, let me change my scissors a little bit, uh, not quite working. Yes, you can see that we're getting close to the inside track repellent zone right there. And that would be in the 290 uh, two, no, three oh one ish area. So let's watch that closely on the I, and the uh, QQQ, the IWM, the Russell two thousand is trading. Whoops, get rid of that. Okay, IWM. Here we go. So what I'm looking at, what I'm, I'm getting this up. Here's the IWM. Look at that nice double bottom on the two hundred period moving average in the daily. The weekly held the 14 period moving average. And you can see the tussle that's going on here in the monthly chart for the I shares of the Russell 2000 small cap to get that pink nine period moving average to finally cross back up to go over the black to turn green. And the MACD is starting to improve. The histogram of the MACD, stochastic still lousy at 35%, but the on balance volume says that there has been buy. So that's the IWM. Um, let me just, and all of these indices have key support on the low of Wednesday. Just make it as simple as possible. Basil, could you look at BP? I'll do that right now. I think it's important that we take uh, questions as well. So, oh, I had this all notated, but then I had to shut down suddenly and couldn't save it. Let me just do this. You know what I'm going to do? I'll put BP here in the next break. I'll do it during the break. And when I come back, I'll do it. So before we get to the break, let me just continue since we're talking about oil. Crude oil has a very strong candle today. This is a Chapman Wave Roman, a green Chapman Wave Roman candle. If at any point in the next two sessions, this is a daily chart, there is a trade that lasts for 90 minutes or more below the, the long wick, the midpoint of the long wick, which means if there is a trade under 77 at any point next week in the continuous contract that holds for about 90 minutes, there's a real good chance we're going to test the low. But if they are two closes, just like we had that Roman candle in the Chapman Wave for the Dow, if there are two closes out of three candles above today's high, which so far is 79.87, whatever the high is at the close today, there are two closes above it, we can go to the next peak on the left side, and that'll be the peak of the 13th of Feb at 80.86. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Oops, Basil Chapman, sitting here for Tom Bobby. My show normally at 10 to 11 is the Tiger Technicians. <laughs> 